ladies and gentlemen, here we go with our next bout of the evening, and we are live on Fight Network. Welcome to the show. We're going to bring this one to you right now from our friends at Head Rush. Remember, fortune favors the brave. Check them out at headrush.com. This bout is set for three five-minute rounds in the XMMA heavyweight division. When the action starts inside the cage, our referee, Mr. Andrew Glenn. And now, let's meet our fighters. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, standing six feet, two and a half inches tall, weighing in at 237.2 pounds. Tonight, he brings to the cage a professional record, four wins versus one defeat. Representing Gladiators Academy of Crowley and fighting out of Crowley, Louisiana, please welcome Brandon Thug Passion A. Bear. And his opponent fighting out of the red corner, standing six feet three and weighing in at 261 pounds. Tonight, he brings to the cage a professional record, seven wins against three defeats. Representing American Top Team and fighting out of Coconut Creek, Florida, please welcome Marcelo Gulma. Here we go, heavyweight action. These guys touch up right away. I don't expect these guys have much of a feeling out pace, do you think, Chris? Oh, no. And I know you can say this in every fight, but I definitely feel like the, the winner is going to be the guy who can implement their game plan and keep the fight <laughs> where they want it to be. I mean, if it's going to be on the ground, I think. <laughs> I mean, now remember, uh, A. Bear is known for quick finishes, a lot of quick two minute knockouts. And he has hands of dynamite, and he has a glorious beard to go with it. Yeah, exactly. But I think that's why Gomes doing a smart thing right now and not letting him keep it on his feet for the first two minutes. He wants to take away space the entire time and smother him. Real good hips there from A. Bear, turning around and, and be able to stay you know, on his feet. Now turn around, getting that underhook pretty quick. You know, so it's not just punchy power that he has. Yeah, he, he's. Look at that, he's very creative with his way to get out the oh, oh, big, big uppercut. uppercut. That, was, that was a serious uppercut, I'm telling you right now. I think Holm is, is, is trying to shake the cobwebs out. Yeah, oh, that Holmes, was a big shot. He, he, does, he didn't like that at all, you could tell. Who would? Uh, touch him with the left hand on the way in there. Holm knows he's in a fight now. Well, I, I do like the way Gomes trying to take away his opponent's strength. He wants to smother him at all times and not let him get those big punches off. Nice knee in the clinch there. That was kind of, uh, A. Bear, you, you saw him set that up. He looked, looked to the right there. He looked away from his opponent. He saw that spinning elbow coming. And he does, he is not shy to trade in there, is he? Man. Look at these shots. Oh, oh that, that was a big knee. Thing. That knee got him. He's looking to set up that spinning back. Look at these guys touch each other up. Heavyweight action here, XMMA. What a great way to start Man. off the main card. Heavyweights banging it out, Chris Lytle. And Marcel's really starting to find a home for those punches right now. I think. I think he's finding Brandon Everybody's got some holes in his defense. He's got good offense, but he's got to worry about that defense right now. I mean, those, those knees were look, look the most devastating to me. Yeah, he landed some good knees, but those punches, they caught his attention as well. Ooh. I mean, th th this just has knockout all over. I think somebody's going to go down Jeez. this fight. These guys are loving each other with those fists. Hey, Bear, one good takedown right there. He's right in the half guard already, almost, almost close into the mount. It reminds me of like, like you said earlier, a Khabib take takedown where you end up you know, trapping the legs. Absolutely, and this is a lot of time to be on the ground. He's still got about half the round. He's going to have to find a way to get up. Brendan Neighbor wanted to make sure I gave a shout out to his wife Josie, his kids Bree, True, and Duty. All right. Well, man, he, I mean, he's, he, he's already showed he's well-rounded. I mean, he showed good hips. He was able to, to get the uh, underhooks back when he was all against the fence, and his hands are quick. This right here is where that weight comes into factor. You notice that Marcelo was about 20 pounds heavier than him, and this is where it really shows when you get on your opponent, wear them out. That takes away some of that punching power. Now Christopher James just passed me a note, and he said that uh, Brandon Abair's beard was actually – Three inches longer, and he caught fire at a barbecue recently. He had to trim it. <laughs> That's and not surprising. The best thing is, I believe that 100%. Yeah, I love yeah. this guy. Now we got one hook in. 
as the Brazilian is trying to wear out the American's spirit and his energy so he doesn't have to worry about those punches coming up. Absolutely. And Hebert's doing a good job of trying to get around, but, man, his, his opponent's just smothering him right now, yeah, right. using all, and all he that is, weight. And he is 20, 30 pounds bigger. Exactly. He needs to try and get his back to the matter, get his back to the cage, or try and get this guy off of he, He's got to create some kind of a scramble right now. Look at that good elbow. I mean, he, he just, he, you could tell that Brandon, he has, he has it when it comes to striking. Some guys, just the way they touch people, is just different. And you can tell he's got it. Now, he almost went too high and was able to escape out the back. But look at Brandon, might, might end up on top? No. Oh, Good job of readjusting. Wow. Yeah. Great job of readjusting. Yeah, and, and for a big guy being 260 pounds, he's able to move fairly well on the ground. Oh, Thug Passion now on top. And, you know, he's got dynamite in his hands. We might see some big shots getting rained down here momentarily. Maybe some big hammer fists. Yeah, he could do that, or he might just let Ooh. him up. Nice. Those are shots. Playing the drums on his Brazilian <laughs> opponent. <laughs> he said, your name's not Marcelo, you're the bongo. <laughs> He doesn't mind right now being hard. It's a good thing to kind of take a break, regain your strength, and land some bombs. Big shot there to the body. These heavyweights hit hard. Not holding back at all is Brandon A. Bear, as you would think. Man, this is going to be a tough round to call. Couldn't agree more. Marcelo nice had Nice shot there back. at the end. Big hammer fists. I would not be surprised to see that be in a split round. Man, that was definitely a close round. Um, you know, I'm not a judge. What we say doesn't necessarily matter, but I, I'm going to say that, in my opinion, I think you know, Bear pulled it out at the end. Well, it, like I said, it depends on what you're looking at. If you're looking who's doing the most damage, Bear definitely. Yeah. If you look for control, he lost. Let's so. let's take a look at a replay here at XMMA of these big shots. Look at that. That's that uppercut that really lifted the head. That was the first one that made him change his pace. And I here's got... the knee we talked about. Here's a couple of them. And Bear never stopped firing those body shots. Yeah, he looked like it didn't phase him at all. A couple spinning back fists, a spinning elbow attempts. There's a great takedown while he trapped that leg. I mean, we talked about the American top team fighter being well-rounded. He showed it. But he also showed that he was able to absorb some big shots from Bear, who really came down with the thunder in those hammer fists. Once again, I'm glad I'm not judging. Yeah, not, never a fun job. It's much more fun to be over here. <laughs> We can, we can critique them. And Hanging out there at Apple are. is more fun. Yeah, that's what everybody says. <laughs> They're right. Now, it looks like uh, Marcelo's left eye is already swelling quite a bit. Look at it. Looks like I think that happened from one of those last punches at the end of the round. Those hammer fists were no joke. Yeah. Uh, Marcelo, Marcelo's corner in Portuguese calling for headshots, calling for punches to the head. I mean, Abir does need to work on some head movement right there. He's just—he's like, I'm going to hit you harder than you're going to hit me, which is a great strategy as long as it works. But, man, you can't do that for too long. Yeah, he's willing to take one or two to give one. We're going to look for another spinning elbow there. Yeah, I, I, Here comes that same chip. Yep. Tell us about why that takedown is so effective, Chris. Well, you have two points right there that are keeping you up, and when you take one of them away, and lean, it's hard to stand up. It's just like if you take a table and you take out one of the legs and you put something on one side, it's going to fall over. Now, is he looking for a head and arm choke? He is. I think he's fishing for it. But, yeah, I mean, he's able to pull that leg out, and he's done it twice now. And it's, it's, not, it's not like high-level, complicated type wrestling, but it's very effective, isn't it? It doesn't matter how high level, as long as it's effective is the main thing, and especially as people get a little bit more tired. I think you can see that takedown was a little easier to get than the first time. Oh, there he's got that choke hey, pesado, in right pesado. now. Uh, he better get that arm back right over. He already tapped. That's it. That's it. Great submission from the Brazilian representing American top team. Able to get the win right there. And Brandon Hebert visibly upset. I mean, he was really able to deliver some damage. He is not happy. Man, there's that uh, agony of defeat right there. It's all over his face. He really wanted I mean, to win this fight. Listen, he's a gamer, and he, he wants to win no matter what, and he puts out every effort. And, you know, he's a guy that, you know, I, I hope to see him back here at XMMA. Absolutely. He's always entertaining. And you can just tell, I mean, you can tell how upset he is right now. Yeah, of course. Let's take a look at the finish of the fight. Okay, Marcelo right. Golm able to get the head and arm choke on. We talked about it. he was fishing for it. As soon as he was able to spin around, he trapped that arm with his head, and then it's just a matter of him getting 
both legs of the other side. And he didn't even get both legs over yeah. that was in so tight. Are some people able to do that properly? Is it a technique or is it more that Hebert was already breathing hard? Uh, it was a little bit of both, but it, it depends on how tight that squeeze is. And a big, strong 260 pound guy, when he gets it in there and squeezes, there's not much room. That's for sure. I mean, he does out, he did outweigh his opponent quite a bit. You know, I wonder if Brandon Hebert could make 205. He'd be a he'd be a monster at 205. So he had to put on a few pounds. He weighed at 237. Uh, I mean, I'm not sure. Well, I think he's been on his way down. I think yeah. he's been losing weight, so maybe that's the path he's getting towards. Well, he definitely has, has big punches, and he d delivered some damage on on the way to losing by submission. But he made a good showing, as did the Brazilian from American Top Team. But we don't need any judges this time. All we need is our ring announcer. And he will tell us the particulars of the finish here in the second round. Let's throw it up to Christopher James. Our referee, Andrew Glenn, calls a halt to this bout at 1 minute and 17 seconds of round number two. Declaring your winner by submission via arm triangle, triangle, excuse me, the one and only Marcelo Gulm. We have Chris Lights Out Lot Lytle. If we might be able to jump in and get some.